On August 12th, the USDA will release its monthly crop report. For the first time this season, those numbers will include state-level production estimates made from both producer-based responses and actual field inspections. The farmers' guesses on their operations are called agricultural yield surveys. But in the 10 largest corn-producing states, accountable for nearly 83 percent of production in 2015, enumerators will sample hundreds of plots for the agency's objective yield survey. That process, which you're about to see, began this week. Nebraska's National Agricultural Statistics Service recently demonstrated for us how their corn sampling procedure works. In Iowa, Kansas, South Dakota, Nebraska, and the rest of the top 10 growing states in the nation, enumerators are fanning out this week to get a better look at the U.S. corn crop. While the U.S. Department of Agriculture is attempting to sample more than 20,000 corn farmers for its agricultural yield survey in August, the agency will aim to use 1,920 samples from cornfields across the country for its objective yield survey. Together, those results will form the USDA's projections for yield and production in its August crop report. Patrick Boyle is the deputy director for the USDA NAS Northern Plains region. The objective yield survey and the ag yield survey are used in combination because their strengths uh, play off of each other's weaknesses. Uh, the ag yield survey, uh, we can draw far more samples because the cost of collecting the data is relatively inexpensive compared to the objective yield survey. Although calling growers or sending them surveys through the mail for its ag yield survey is cheaper, the USDA says the narrow collection time from July 28th to about August 5th for this report can make things challenging. And it's subjective. The farmer is taking his or her best guess as to what a field will look like at harvest. NAS statistician David BR says that's the benefit of the objective yield survey. The objective side of things, you know, this is we're actually going out, taking hard plant counts and stock counts and getting a solid number. Um, we look at it, it's not just asking somebody, well, what do you think it is going to be when, you know, this part of the field looks good, but the other half of the field doesn't look good. This way we can say this is what it looks like. This is hard numbers for the field. This is how the objective yield survey works. The USDA randomly selects a cornfield from its June area survey. That field will contain two randomly generated sample areas and specific instructions directing where the enumerator is supposed to go. For example, an uh, enumerator may be asked to uh, start at a, at a beginning point and then walk 150 paces uh, down the field and then 119 rows into the field and that's where they'll set up their first plot. Franklin Roby is a supervisor with the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture. He and 11 other enumerators are covering 24 counties in southeast Nebraska. At the end of the last pace, then we take a, a yardstick and drop it down and then that's where we uh, put a, uh, our tape measure and we measure out five feet buffer area and then we go measure out the end of the plot, uh, which would be 20 foot. So we have a 15 foot section. Within that 15 foot section, enumerators will work with plants in two rows. They'll mark the location because they'll return to that exact same plot for the next month's reports. The enumerators forms will direct them to first measure the distance between the two rows. Then they'll measure the distance between the first row and the fifth row. After logging the distance, they'll husk five ears to determine the maturity of the sample. This one is pretty much in the milk stage. Each maturity level carries a coded number. The sum of the five ears will designate what the enumerator does next. If it's uh, between scores of between 13 and 22, then we complete the questions five through 12. In this case, a sum of 20 tells the enumerator to measure the kernel row, use calipers to determine the ear's diameter, and weigh the ears. At a number over 22, indicating a plant near maturity, the enumerator will send ears into a lab for more detailed analysis. They'll then count the number of stalks, the number of stalks with ears or silked ear shoots, the number of total ears in silked ear shoots, and the number of ears with evidence of kernel formation. Due to weather's impact on corn in various growth stages across the country, those numbers could change in future inspections. Each year, you know, a lot of it's weather dependent, uh, going through pollination, if there's a heat wave that comes through at that time, 
um, if there's stress on the plants, um, if ears will fill out completely or not. Roby says sampling both plots or units of a field will take a couple of hours to complete. At the end, he'll have one of Nebraska's 260 objective yield samples for the August crop report. But enumerators don't determine or even know the field's yield estimate when they finish. The numbers they entered on their form are plugged into a formula based on the plant's measurable characteristics and the historic relationship of what a plant with those characteristics would produce. Based on previous data that we have in the past, we can use that for modeling to come up with uh, an expected yield. It's possible an enumerator may be sampling the very worst area of a field, but it's also possible that an inspector in Wisconsin or Ohio or Illinois may be sampling the absolute best part of a field. The objective yield survey samples together are intended to paint an accurate picture of crop conditions across the country. Having access to accurate data, unbiased data, is critical to, uh, to a free market. Uh, NAS data, uh, while it may not be perfect, it is the best data out there. There is no agenda behind it. Um, we are there to level the playing field for farmers and ranchers across the country.